it's Anya here at OurGuildHome.com and in this video I'm going to show you how you can make we need to move a kitten on the table cultured buttermilk two different ways and it's really simple What you need is your milk. We love raw milk, but you can use pasteurized milk for this just as well. I have some warm milk in here. If it says yogurt in here, don't worry about that. Sometimes I'm a little bit off with my labeling. And then you will need cultured buttermilk and you will need some kefir. So this is one method and this is the other method. Uh, kefir is something you need to get kefir grains. If you don't have kefir going in your house, these are really easy to find. I will be linking some sources in the description box below this video. And here's another, these kittens are awfully cute, but they always like to get into things. Where was I? Kittens, <laughs> kefir. <laughs> so you can get sources for kefir online in the description box below this video and the culture of buttermilk is something that's pretty easy to find in supermarkets just know that when i'm talking about cultured buttermilk i'm not talking about the kind of buttermilk where you mix buttermilk and vinegar or a lemon juice that is not fermented that is not cultured that's a different method how to get buttermilk and we're being we're using the cultured method education here a little training for these kittens so for one method we need a little less than a quart of milk in our quart sized mason jars and we will pour don't you love when I have to do this we'll pour out a quarter cup of buttermilk into each quart size mason jar that is not quite filled to the top with the milk. So I'm pouring about half a cup. Of buttermilk in here and just know that these measurements don't have to be super exact. If you have just a smidge more or just a little bit less, that will be fine. And I'll pour this in here eyeballing about half and half in each. And we'll give this a quick stir. And I'm going to put the lids back on loosely. They don't have to be tight. You can also use these linen beeswax wraps. I have a video in which I'm showing you how you can make these. And then we'll set these aside. I like to keep my ferments separate from each other a few feet. So I'm going to set these over here in my kitchen. And they'll sit there overnight for at least about eight hours. And then I'll talk to you about um, what to look for and how to know when it's been fermented long enough. This is about, let's see, this is about four in the afternoon. Well, it's going to be a little bit more than eight hours because I'm going to do it overnight. And then tomorrow morning, I'll come back and show you what's happening. And then here I have um, about two thirds of a quart of cream that I took off of our raw milk into which I am stirring about Stir this up a fresh kefir. About two tablespoons of kefir, not the kefir grains, just the kefir. And again, I feel like there's another kitten coming here on the table. No, thinking about it. So I'll put the beeswax wrap back on the kefir, which I will let ferment just a little bit longer and put a loose lid on this and let that also sit 
at least 12 hours. I want that to be, this is, this is really runny as you can see, it's the cream, and I am looking for it to be really stiff. So we'll set that in a different part of the kitchen and then come back tomorrow and see how these ferments are doing. So now I have these 24 hours later and the method where I put the buttermilk right into the milk resulted in this. You can see it's really thick. The whole um, quart of milk has turned into cultured buttermilk, which is a, a pretty thick consistency. I'm going to get a spoon and show you how thick. So you can see how it's cultured. And at this point you could use that to make pancakes with it or waffles. However, you would use cultured buttermilk from the store. Um, so this is ready to go. It will keep in the refrigerator. And then this other method where I added kefir to the cream. So this is really thick. I'm going to get another spoon. The cream has cultured too. And as you can see, it's really thick. So now I'm going to turn that into butter. And what would happen is that I will get the butter and what comes out of it is the butter milk. So I'm going to do this. I have a video in which I'm showing you how you can make butter. I actually have two videos and I'm actually linking both of them here. And um, I'm going to put this in the Vitamix or in my kitchen aid. I haven't decided yet. But regardless, when I have the butter and what I will pour off the buttermilk is your cultured buttermilk, which I will show you once I'm done with the butter. So I've decided to make the butter in my Vitamix. And here is the butter. You can see how it is separated from the cultured buttermilk. So I'm going to pour this into this mason jar here. You can see how thick it is. that there's little specks of butter in here and you, if you have a not quite so fine colander you can actually keep them in the buttermilk which makes it a little bit more authentic alpine style and I will put this back in here this is good butter and then you want to wash your butter because the Buttermilk is what makes your butter go rancid faster. And that is what I will do in the next step. But here's your cultured buttermilk. So here you have buttermilk two different ways. The one where you pour buttermilk into your milk and it can be raw milk or it can be pasteurized milk and let it sit. And then the other one where you add kefir to your cream and that can be raw cream or pasteurized cream. You can also, I have not experienced this myself, but I know people who add yogurt to it or buttermilk, anything that is a fermented dairy to ferment the cream and then you make the butter by separating the butter from the buttermilk and this is really where the word buttermilk comes from because it is the milk that is a result of the butter making. And if you have ever been in Europe, in the Alps, and have gone high up to these um, little inns where they serve you very rustic food, they often will have buttermilk on their menu. And this is actually this kind of buttermilk. Usually it has some little specks in it that I filtered out, but this is so good. Slightly tangy, um, reminds me so much of exactly those places and just one quick tip if you're making this at home, um, it really depends on your temperatures. 
So because this I'm doing in the middle of winter, so it took me a little bit longer. You can also, if you have an oven with a pilot light or that you can set really low to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you can also put these in there for um, just about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then turn the oven off or set it closer to a heater source. In the summer, this might go faster. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your ferment because you don't want to over ferment this and um, let it get too thick. And then once you have fermented it, you can put it in the refrigerator. Also, if let's say you're making this and you're not really ready to use it right away, you can then keep it in the refrigerator. But these ferments are always temperature dependent and they do best anywhere between 70 to 77 degrees. And um, again, you can set it close to heater source or in a warm oven or close to anywhere where it's warm in your house and that will actually help the fermentation. But I have mine fermenting for about really 24 hours in the end. And again, you can use them for your pancakes or however else you would use buttermilk at home. And I'm actually gonna make quark with this. If you're not sure what that is, or if you're curious what I'm gonna do with it or um, how I'm gonna make it, stay tuned for another video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video about how you can make buttermilk at home really easily. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new on my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I upload a new video every week. Thank you so much for joining me here in my kitchen and see you in the next video.